This is Tips from the Top Floor, episode 921 for uh, October the 19th, 2022. Hey, hello. No intro music still. I'm still on the, uh, the emergency setup, kind of, M1 laptop, which is surprisingly fast. But yeah, the status is still, the, the iMac Pro is dead with a broken SSD and uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to continue using that system well at least not in the in the capacity that it was used before because it's i don't know it's time to say goodbye to intel yeah i'm sorry but the, the, the apple silicon is just so much faster and it's more silent and more energy efficient and so on and so on so yes it is going to be a macbook air m2 yes an air not a pro um which will be fully specced and the this is this machine is faster than the iMac Pro. It doesn't have a fan. It's portable. Um, it'll have like a two terabyte SSD in it, uh, enough memory. Uh, so so it'll more well in some aspects it'll more than replace the iMac Pro. Uh, in one aspect it won't, and that is the screen, of course. Um, Thirteen inches versus twenty seven inches is a bit of a difference. But um, I have a plan. Let's see how, how well it will work. I think it will work. And uh, that's uh, the iMac Pro because it still has a perfectly good display. Um, I'll give that an external SSD. Uh, just enough to run a base system and then use that as a sidecar display. That's something Apple does where you can use um, a Mac as a sidecar display to um, yeah to, uh, to a laptop, to, to an iPad. I think it's possible. Anyway, so uh, I'll find out. I'll find out. I'm, I've ordered the M2. I've, I'm waiting for it. Should be here in about two weeks. And then I'll hopefully be back in business as usual. And of course, um, you can support the show. <laughs> Speaking of expenses, um, that laptop is an unexpected 3,000 euro uh, expense. And yeah, you can support the show. Go to tfttf.com slash support. Or become a Patreon uh, supporter, and 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 you will get the new episodes before anyone else gets them because that's where I post them before even release Pixie Rafsitar gets them. And speaking of release Pixie, happy birthday, Matt! Glad you're around. Um, thanks for all the years of helping TFTTF come out on time and for still doing that. You're awesome. Everyone, give a big hand to Matt. All right, on with the show. This one's jam packed. This one's. A whole bunch of interesting stuff. I'm so, I'm so happy about. Well, <laughs> I'm scared about all the developments in photography because things are moving at a really fast pace. But at the same time, I'm also happy to see some things that have been in the making for years come to fruition. Um, and uh, change means news, and news are <laughs> great for me because. I love learning new things and I love uh, telling you about new things. First of all, um, here's MetaLens. MetaLens um, is a company that has just received a $30 million funding round. And uh, if, if you look at what cameras do or did in the past, or our cameras all still do that, is they, they have a flat sensor and then they have like a package of several lenses combined into a... a a lens, a telephoto lens, a prime lens, a zoom lens, and so on, that uh, then projects a focused image onto the flat sensor. That's how cameras work. The camera obscura is a bit different with a, the pinhole, but um, in general, that's how cameras work. You have lenses, and you can take a picture with a single lens, but then usually we're talking heavy, big slabs of glass, a multiple of those. Um, even in your smartphone, you have three, four, five, six elements in there. Now, uh, Metal Lens is changing that. And again, they've just received a $30 million funding round. So what are they doing? Um, we've talked about flat lenses in the past year, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're using what they call meta surface technology uh, to create flat lenses. And those are nanostructures. Like, just imagine a flat sheet of some semi translucent semi semiconductor and uh, you put nanostructures on them on that like we're talking pillars small very tiny pillars of different diameters and different heights and um those will change the light that goes through them because they are on the same 
uh, relative scale as the wavelength of light or the wavelengths of light are. And uh, in the past, uh, creating pictures this way was only possible with a very thin slice of the spectrum, like the, typically only infrared. And uh, over time, they expanded that. And now they do, um, as far as I can tell, full spectrum. Um, thanks to AI, pretty much, because AI will take what's coming through the meta lens and then reconstruct that uh, an image from that. And the result, again, of a few years ago, a year, two years ago, maybe, there was this article about s cameras the size of grains of salt. Um, not sure they're that small, but they pretty much make tiny cameras. But what we're talking about here won't find its way in to the cameras that you have in your hands just yet. Um, we're ta not talking fine art photography here. Uh, we're more talking in other fields, especially in areas like 3D sensing. And uh, an integrator, uh, a company named ST Micro Alex Electronics, um, ST was looking for like better cameras to equip uh, certain 3D sensing systems that they build. We're not very specific, but I have an idea where this goes. Um, and these guys, ST Microelectronics, you might not know about them, but they are a supplier for lots of consumer devices. So you will... Uh, they they make consumer uh, they make microcontrollers and they make um, secure things and sensors and actuators and connectivity and all that kind of stuff and um, it's interesting because they have they have they, they're using meta lens uh, devices now and uh, CEO of meta lens says that this year alone they are expecting to have millions of devices going out to various consumer applications so seems like that those flat lenses are getting an actual use in devices. Now, where are they going to get an, an actual use? Um, again, quoting the CEO, he says, the, uh, or quoting the article that is linked here, um, says that uh, though he couldn't name models, he said to expect household names with more devices coming down the line. In fact, they locked down another big deal while the article was being written, a new buyer for the original imaging device that should hit the market in 2023, though which, again, he could not name. What I think where this is going is things like face recognition in phones or other devices um, where, where space is at a premium, like laptops and stuff. Um, I want face ID in my laptop. I want to look at it to unlock it. Um, and looking at the thinness of the lids of laptops these days, there. You need smaller stuff in there. And uh, cameras are cheaper than what we have. If you look at Apple's Face ID right now, that is a that's, a, that's a camera solution that uses a Face ID laser and then it uses a, what's called a time-of-flight camera that um, the, the laser shoots an infrared dot pattern at your face and then the camera, an infrared camera, reads that back in time-of-flight. It can tell how far things are away, gives you a gives it a three-dimensional representation of your face and so on. Um, Metalens claims that their devices are half the price and half the thickness for these kind of solutions. So uh, chances are we'll use Metalens cameras with flat lenses without even knowing it. So I mean, I'm, I'm looking, I'm keeping an eye out for where these things will go. Second topic, rings around a system. Yes, James Webb Telescope. Uh, has several instruments on board, and one is the MIRI, the mid-infrared instrument. And uh, astronomer Ryan Lau just found something really interesting. He found rings. And now, if you go to the to the linked NASA blog entry, uh, you will see those rings, and they look they totally look like lens artifacts, like a diffraction pattern or uh, something a Fresnel lens might produce, like concentric like rings optical artifacts kind of stuff uh, this this would have been my <laughs> instinctively my first guess slightly miss they're not round they're slightly misshapen um but yeah they i probably concern uh, i probably um, compare them to rings in a in a tree rings that you find in a tree trunk well they are not optical artifacts <laughs> turns out they're real they are actually there um so the, the system that 
that the uh, Ryan Lau found this in is a double star that both have a very long elliptical orbit. So they will get close every eight years and then swing back out again to the other end of their orbit. And, and, by, and during that swing by, they will stir up lots of dust. And that dust then moves outwards. So, uh, and in fact, it's not rings. If you look, we see them as rings, but they're actually shells, like three-dimensional shells. And uh, there are 17 of those visible or visible to, to James Webb. So every eight years, a new one that spans like 130 years of dust being kicked up and flung into space. And um, they are moving outward at a speed of 6 million miles per hour. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's just amazing to see how much more we can learn uh, thanks to pretty much developments in cameras and telescopes and that technology. So yay for James Webb and the things that it finds. It's still, there are still so many surprises out there. It's, it's wild. All right. Next one is, um, well, it's an AI related thing, <clears throat> but it, it, it does have, for me, it also does have a photography angle. That's why I'm bringing this here. Um, uh, here's another angle uh, on the general AI revolution that we are in the middle of right now and it, it does concern photography and how we learn and some like an, it'll have some social implications I, um, I've said it in the past that, that like computational photography the stuff that we found in, in our cameras that is just the tip of the iceberg just the beginning of something much much bigger and um we're not going to get through this revolution unscathed. And and yes, I believe firmly believe it's a revolution. It's not just some slow change. It is hitting really quickly and uh, in ways that we can't even imagine. So here's a short story. Let's take this outside photography for a second. Students are using AI to write their papers. Of course they are. <laughs> of course they are. Um, and, you know, as the AI, like GPT-3, for example, language model, and, and, and there are others following that are even bigger, um, the AI doesn't just copy something that's there, as in, like, the same with AI image generation. It doesn't just copy something, it creates something um, that hasn't been there before. So, same with, uh, with the copy that comes out of uh, GPT-3. It comes up with new stuff, and uh, those those plagiarism detection tools that are in use at schools, they are useless. They just don't work anymore. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a problem. Why am I talking about this on a photography show? Well, because we're facing, I guess we are facing something similar in our area of specialization. Now, you know, go, go back, go back in your memory, doing homework at school, working through a problem, thinking about it, writing about it, I believe that's an important tool to build skill, to develop the ability to walk, to work through a problem. And as much as I hated some home homework back then while I was at school, I now do understand why at least some of that is necessary and important. Learning to, like learning to take a step outside of your comfort zone to stretch that boundary it's an important it's really important for growth it, 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 it growth it happens while stretching while yeah going beyond what you did before and like almost all my growth has come from exactly that setting myself goals or being faced with goals that were set for me um goals that that are beyond what i did in the past and Writing a paper at school, that will not only help you learn about the subject matter, it will also help you hone your writing skills. Having uh, written a couple of books, I, yeah, that's an important skill to have these days. Um, anything you produce can benefit from writing. Even photography can benefit from writing because you tend to use a different part of your brain to conceptualize things. So, Teachers are getting worried that kids will not get that benefit when they use an AI to write the papers for them. And I can see something along those lines happening in photography. You could 
work on a composition, like wait until the light is right and determine where the subject goes and so on, and then end up with a great photo and learning something in the progress at the process. Or you could describe that to an AI. Could describe to an AI what you want in words and then get 10 suggestions and pick out the one that you like most and then maybe refine that a bit and be done. Without having picked up a camera, without having set up a light, without having to interact with a with a human model. Is that something we should be worried about? I mean, serious question. Or is that just a transfer of like skill to another field? Instead of, I don't know, learning to compose a photo, you learn to describe that that desired outcome. So your your conceptualization skills will grow your actual photography skills will fade because you won't need the camera as much is that something we should be worried about i mean i've gone through a lot of transitions um and some of them required to to swap skills out for others or to move into a different direction so i'm not sure is that is that something are we just looking at inevitable change I mean, we cannot uninvent the things that are out there, and we and honestly, we still haven't seen anything just yet. I'm deep in that rabbit hole. I can tell you there is a lot to come. Anyway, I'd really be interested in your opinion or in your gut feeling, and uh, please submit your feedback to a, to tfttf.com/ hi. That's where you can write stuff record something or yeah just let me know tfttf.com slash hi okay um last but not least uh let's talk about runway ml and uh, some call it a game changer now what is it runway ml it's a it's a video editor on its surface like uh, a web-based video editor so you fire it up fire it up in your browser um and uh there are others like that, but then it combines a lot of the latest AI developments that we have seen in photography, and then it applies that to video, and that's where it becomes interesting. So let me go through some of the features that it offers. I think it's still in beta. Um, I've tried a few of those. I haven't really spent too much time with it, but um, what I've seen initially is quite impressive. So it can remove backgrounds. Or put a person in front of a virtual green screen for you. Um, and then you can replace the background, of course, with something else. Uh, of course, you can blur the background, but then Zoom and others do that live. So that's not a biggie. But um, then if you want to take that into another tool, let's say you, you're still in Premiere or Final Cut Pro, uh, it can export what's called an alpha mat, which is, uh, which is your your transparency channel, <laughs> and then you can use that in other tools. Um, yeah, it does motion tracking for you. Again, AI-based. Uh, of course, text-to-image. So it has it has something like stable, I would guess stable diffusion under the hood to allow you to generate images for, yeah, again, video backgrounds and stuff. Um, it does image-to-image which is like style transfer. Like you can make a photo into a cartoon or make a photo into a painting or make a cartoon into a photo and so on, uh, which works astonishingly well. Uh, did I mention it's in browser? Yeah, I did. Um, it has transfer... Trans, what's the word? Transcription. That's what I was looking for. Transcription built in. Uh, I would guess it's powered by Whisper, which is a new open source a uh, transcription neural network, which works amazingly well. Um, so you can, with one click, pretty much add subtitles like that. And they are good. I've played with Whisper. It's 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 good. <laughs> it's really good. Um, what else does it do? AI-based audio cleanup. So if you have a, a clip with a lot of background noise, I mean, I don't know, traffic or air conditioner or something, then it can take that out. Fairly good. The examples I've seen are, are quite convincing. Um, it'll allow you to remove objects or people from video. That's 
motion in painting pretty much so let's say you have a snippet of video and there's a lamppost that you don't like or stuff that you would do in lightroom or in whatever photo editor you use clone stuff out but it's video so you clone it out and it's cloned out from the entire clip stuff that used to be very very uh hard to do is now just a click away it even creates lots for you like uh, lookup tables for uh, color grading by just describing the mood you want, like put something in the like summer evening golden hour, bam, you have a lot that gives you that. So, is that is that a tool that would be interesting to you? Um, do you have like an application for that? Will you ditch your Final Cut Pro or your Adobe Premiere for this? And uh, do you think the big companies will catch up to that, or are we looking at yet another field that is about to be? To be disrupted. I'm not sure. I'm just looking at the big camera manufacturers, Canon, Nikon, and so on, who uh, the clearly are affected by the smartphones being yeah, being as good as they are. Um, so, and who are not as quick. Um, I'm looking at the car industry who are struggling to catch up with the disruptors right now. So there's like a lot of areas of disruption these days. And uh, is that a disruptor? Is Runway ML a, disrupt a disruptor? I'd like to hear your opinion on that. <laughs> Go to tfdtf.com slash hi and let me know. And that was it for this episode of Tips from the Top Floor. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for being subscribed. You're awesome. You can, of course, follow Tips from the Top Floor on Twitter at TFTTF Photo, TFTTF P H O T O. And uh, yeah, drop your feedback. Drop your feedback for the show at TFTTF.com slash hi or write or record a voicemail. That's TFTTF.com slash hi. And of course, we have some feedback here. Um, this time by Sina. All right. Uh, Sina writes, hello, Chris. I have been listening to your show for many years, been a guest on your show a couple of times up until 2020, supported you on Patreon. Then the world shut down and we all changed in many ways. But a stubborn part of me stuck with the idea of the good old days as a way to survive the strange times mentally. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, then you return to making the new TFTTF episodes at some point in time and I was happy to hear your voice. However, the good old days way of thinking got in the way of me properly enjoying the weekly shows. And it took a couple of episodes to realize that 2020 Chris, uh, 2022 Chris is not like pre-2020 Chris. And that is okay because I am now how I, because I am not how I was pre-2020 either. Thanks for your hard work bringing us these lovely episodes. Sina, thank you so much. Yeah, events can change us the times change and looking at what's happening in photography when i started tips on the top floor in 2005 yes it's that long ago um those were clearly simpler times even though we were at the beginnings of a digital photography revolution so there was plenty of change to uh to back then but given all the things that changed around us these days and given the big changes that have come upon many of us uh, through the pandemic. Oh, wow. So for me, uh, for example, that that meant that my income was slashed in half. Yes. The photo travel falling off a cliff. That's a tough pill to swallow. and um, And I'm still one of the lucky ones because I still have some, uh, albeit... <laughs> very much smaller sources of income but i can survive and uh i do know of some others who were who were fully vested in the photo travel business and who were out of a job pretty much overnight so yes life is tougher now and uh, of course that that leaves its traces i mean how could it not but you know i'm, I'm really glad i managed to bring this uh show back Maybe in a slightly different form, and maybe maybe I'm a bit different, even though I don't think I am. I don't think I change that much, but tips from the top floor is is really important for me. 
Uh, Tips from Tolkien has always changed over time, by the way. If you are a long-time listener, you have, uh, together with me and the show, you've gone through <laughs> quite a few permutations. And I'm I'm really grateful that I have an audience who who always accepted that, who stuck with me, who maybe even liked the show to meander and to morph into different things over time. I owe a lot to this little podcast. And that alone is a good reason to continue making it. And uh, with your feedback and with your help and support, that's not going to change. Anyway, if you can, please support the show at Patreon, tfttf.com slash Patreon starts at $1 per episode and it it really helps. Your support makes a real difference now more than ever. Thank you so much. And now go out and take amazing photos. Be hyper super maximum nice to each other. <laughs> and of course, happy shooting. <laughs>